Hey everyone, I'm back with a project that I have finally finished after starting it over a year ago. Here I'm gluing my paper template onto a plastic garage sale sign. I'm using some leftover 532 inch thick 01 tool steel from my first knife. Unfortunately, because this project took so long, I wasn't able to document the entire process, so I, I lost a lot of continuity with the video clips. Filing a little notch always helps starting the hacksaw cut when the stock is angled like this. The little clamp is there to help stop excessive noise and resonation while cutting. Here are two stainless steel liners that I have prepared. I cut them from an old barbecue spatula. It was my original intention for this knife to be a liner lock with either micarta or aluminum scales and stainless steel liners. Here I'm cutting the lock bar. I've got good movement and I've left myself plenty of room to grind in the final locking surface. Time to grind in the blade bevel. I decided to go with a full flat grind this time. You can see a springway arch as I desperately tried to figure out how to make this knife at least assisted opening. 
I never did really find out an elegant way to accomplish that. Here is the point at which this project stalled as I couldn't come up with a plan to proceed. I decided despite not really solving all of my goals, I would go ahead and finish it, otherwise I'd, I'd never finish it. So I began work on making some aluminum scales. I'm marking out the outline of the aluminum scales. However, since I used the stainless steel liners as a guide, this wasn't really necessary. Now I have both aluminum scales sandwiched between the stainless steel liners. The liners will act as a guide and allow me to shape the aluminum scales to match the liners perfectly. And in this way you could see how marking out the outline was a waste of time. Somewhere along the way I decided that the thickness of the aluminum scales that I had plus the thickness of the stainless steel liners plus the thickness of the separation required by the relatively thick blade meant that this knife was going to be almost three quarters of an inch thick. So I changed my mind again and decided to abandon the stainless steel liners altogether. This would mean I would need a different means of locking the blade open. And for me that meant making a button lock. And to make a button lock I needed a button. This motor was from a water pump I got from the hardware store. I never used it to pump water, I just wanted the motor. This wound up working much better than I expected. I'm also going to make a pocket clip out of some scrap stainless steel.
So here's what I've got so far. It's quite a bit different than what I envisioned to begin with. Now this is starting to look like folding knife parts. There are five screws, four spacers, plus a stop pin sleeve, three threaded inserts, and a threaded button spring plate. The button, the spring, the chain ring bolt I use as the pivot, and two plastic washers. This is the part of the video where I explained all of the problems I had and things that I learned. If you're going to make a folding knife, particularly a button lock, there are some things to consider before you start. One problem I ran into is I didn't have my final hardware sorted out. That is to say, I didn't know what kind of hardware I would ultimately use in the finished knife. This became a problem because the hardware that I used temporarily sort of forced my hand into what hardware I could use later. The holes in the aluminum scales were all clearance holes, which means in order to hold the pieces together, the fastener needed a nut on the other side. I wound up having to make some threaded inserts out of some stainless steel nuts, which I filed the corners off of and beveled to fit into a counter bore. These are the aluminum spacers I used. They all needed to be hand fit because stock sizes were too big. This is the stop pin screw reinforcing sleeve. This helps protect the screw that I used as the stop pin from getting damaged. This threaded plate is for the button spring hole. Here's the button filed down to the final dimensions. I've drilled out a spot in the bottom for the spring. Now here's something to consider if you're going to be making a button lock. You'll need to be able to drill a hole with a flat bottom. Since I couldn't really do that and didn't have the required thickness and the handle scales to allow me to get away with not doing that, I had to drill completely through the handle scale and seal off the bottom of the hole with that threaded plate. Here is the slightly modified chain ring bolt I used as the pivot. Using such a large pivot kind of put me in a corner. I wasn't able to put a coil spring anywhere in here because the pivot didn't allow room for it. I also have two plastic washers that I made from a milk jug. The scales are countersunk for the hardware. You could see how the hardware size dictated how close to the edge I could drill the holes for the spacers. You can see here now a problem I ran into. I had to reshape the blade in order for the edge to not contact the spacers on the back. This bottom spacer has a nylon sheath around it because the blade actually contacts that one when closed.
Here you could see the small lockup surface for the button when the blade is in the open position. A small counter bore helps the chain ring bolts sit down a little more flush. You can see here now how the button would interact with the blade. In this condition it would be the button fully depressed. If you're going to fabricate your own button, there are a lot of things to consider. The button stroke, or how far up and down the button is allowed to move. The distance from the bottom of the button to the top of the taper. The distance from the bottom of the taper to the top of the button hat. And the button hat flange all have to work together to provide proper operation. After heat treating, I tempered the blade at 400 degrees for two hours in a toaster oven. I then applied a coat of burnt bronze Cerakote, which was the only color of Cerakote that I have. finished. Thanks for watching.